This could be the break Starkville police had been working toward for nearly 30 years. A possible suspect in the Labor Day murders, WCBI News starts now. WCBI News at 10 starts now. Breaking news out of Starkville tonight, Starkville police have arrested a man we believe to be the prime suspect in the Labor Day murders from 1990. In exclusive video, this is Michael W. Devon from Princess County. Outside sources tell us Starkville investigators brought him in this evening as part of the investigation into the cold case murder of Betty Jones and the assault on Catherine Krigler. Tonight, we anticipate Devon will be charged with capital murder and sexual battery. WCBI's Joey Barnes has been following the story and has the latest. Michael Devon had nothing to say as he arrived at the Starkville Police Department on Saturday night. Did you kill Betty Jones and Catherine Krigler in 1990? Those are the same crimes that Starkville detectives have been investigating for nearly three decades. Starkville Police spokesman Brandon Lovelady will not confirm that this arrest is connected to the Labor Day case. But Lovelady says that Starkville Police Chief Frank Nichols has scheduled a news conference Monday in connection to Devon's arrest. Here's what we know about Michael Devon. He is 51 years old. He was being held in the Tishomingo County Jail on unrelated drug charges. Were you in Starkville in 1990? on Labor Day. If Devon is responsible for these crimes, he would have been 23 years old at the time. And this arrest, if Devon is confirmed to be the suspect, is the result of technology that did not exist in 1990 and good old fashioned police work. We do know that Startville investigators have been working on this case using new resources like Ancestry.com and DNA scientists at Parabon Labs in North Carolina and at Scales DNA Lab in Jackson. Our outside sources tell us that this arrest is a result of that extensive work. The actual crime happened in a small house belonging to Katherine Krigler on Labor Day evening in 1990. Her friend Betty Jones was visiting at the time Police believe Mrs. Jones answered a knock at the door. That's when the suspect entered the home, killed Mrs. Jones, then went into the bedroom where he sexually assaulted Mrs. Krigler and left her for dead. Mrs. Krigler was actually able to call 911. Evidence gathered at the home has proved crucial in what may be closure in this case. Where have you been since 1990? We expect Starkville Police to release information Monday in this investigation. Be sure to follow WCBI News on Facebook and Twitter for the latest information. Good morning, everyone. This is a WCBI uh, coverage of a Starkville Police Department press conference regarding the arrest in the 1990 Labor Day murder. I believe that press conference is just now getting underway. We will join them. Investigator of these cases. I'm Dory Talley with WCBI News. Do we know a motive for, for what caused all of this that night? Um, again, that goes into the particulars of the case that will have to come out of trial. And we would, again, there's got to be a jury that's going to be picked in this county, and we don't want to bias anyone. We want this man to get his day in court if that's what he wants, and we don't want to prejudice the jury by providing information that's that will come out uh, at a later date when it's appropriate. Do we know why he was in Starkville this day? Um, I'm sorry, but again, I, I'll refer to what I just said. It, it, we do uh, know uh, those facts, but um, again, um, the investigation is still ongoing. All right, welcome back, everyone. You have just been listening in on a press conference from the Starkville Police Department regarding an arrest in that 1990 Labor Day murder of Betty Jones and the sexual battery of Kathy, Catherine Krigler. We heard some very, very compelling comments out of that press conference just now from the chief of police, from the mayor of Starkville, 
uh, Lynn Sproul, but I think the most compelling thing we heard was from the detective, the detective rather, who has dedicated so many years to trying to bring closure for this family there in Starkville. Sergeant Bill Lott talking about uh, working on his own time uh, when he was off from working other cases. Uh, one thing we heard there today is that today is Betty Jones' birthday. She would have been celebrating her birthday today. You're looking now at crime scene from 1990 uh, from those Labor Day murders. We also heard from District Attorney Scott Cologne, who commended uh, Sergeant Bill Lott on his dedication. You also heard Chief Frank Nichols also commending uh, Sergeant Lott on his dedication. But the district attorney also saying that his office is committed to prosecuting this case to the fullest extent of the law, and they want to make sure that it happens as quickly as possible. Uh, we also learned that uh, Bill Lott got this case after leaving the, the police department to go serve in the armed forces, but got back and really wanted to work on this case. Again, an arrest made there in Starkville in the 1990 Labor Day murder, the murder of Betty Jones, who would have been celebrating her birthday today. That person arrested, Michael Devon, arrested Saturday night in Starkville. This is him being led uh, into jail by Sergeant Bill Lott, the man who has worked so long on this case. Uh, he will have an initial appearance this evening at Starkville Municipal Court in front of Judge Favor to uh, hear the charges against him. Again, that is this evening in Starkville Municipal Court. We will, of course, have the very latest coming up for you on WCBI News Midday. We'll have a live report to recap that press conference and then the very latest coming up on WCBI News at 5 and 6 and, of course, on our social media platforms. Thank you so much. We'll return you back to your original programming. I mean, she stood up for things, and she, I, mean, I, know, I know without a doubt she fought this guy. On what would have been her 93rd birthday, official charges in the 1990 cold case murder of Betty Jones and the assault on her friend, Katherine Krigler. WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Starkville police believe they have the man responsible for a brutal murder and assault that happened nearly 30 years ago. Police confirming today that 51-year-old Michael W. Devon of Rienzi is charged with capital murder and sexual battery. His bond, $10 million for the murder charge and an additional $1 million for the sexual battery. Now, this is Devon. Saturday evening, as Starkville detectives escorted him from a police vehicle to the police station where he was booked on the charges. Investigators traveled to Tishomingo County, where Devon was in jail on unrelated drug charges. In a midday news conference, Sergeant Bill Lott said the arrest is the result of a positive DNA match. Now, Devon is making his first appearance right now in front of a Starkville Municipal Court judge. This is the end of a long day for investigators and for the families. Our Jory Talley joins us live in Starkville with more. Jory. It's been an emotional day for Starkville lead detective Sergeant Bill Lott. For him, the 1990 Labor Day cold case has been about science, DNA, and endless hours of work over the years. It's also about justice for the victims. It's been a long long journey. So it's understandable if this detective needed to take a minute. Today is Betty's birthday. Betty Jones was 65 years old when she was killed. It's really special that it happened, happened to fall on her birthday that we do this. We're able to announce the arrest for her, her birthday. Yeah. Sergeant Bill Lott says he sees Betty Jones and Katherine Krigler as more than just victims. He sees his own family in the two ladies. I was raised by uh, my sister and my aunts, and I've always had strong women. And the more I read this case, uh, you know, amazing person Betty Jones was, and Catherine taught school for 30 something years. My Aunt Hilda taught 30 something years. To me, you know, it started to get too really, really close. Saturday. He sat across from the suspect for the first time. I just told the other detective, I said, you do the talk, and I just want to look at it for a little bit. Um, because, you know, it, it was emotional for me, and I just, 
needed to center myself, you know, because it's been a long journey. Lott says he can confirm 51-year-old Michael Devon has been in the North Mississippi area since the crime happened back on Labor Day of 1990. He has less to say about motive or even how Devon arrived in town. Starkville is a college town. It's a transient town. A lot of people come here to live for a while and then they leave. And then a lot of people come here to see a football game or they come here for a party. When I was in high school, you know, I came to start with for parties. And it could have been very well, you know, some situations like that. So, you know, those, like you said, you know, the list of possibilities are endless. It is now time for the investigators to hand the case off to the prosecutors. And that's where we stand tonight. Currently, right now behind me, inside of the Startful Municipal Court, Michael Devon is making his first court appearance in front of a judge. We're going to have the very latest coming up at 9 and 10 on WCBI News. But for now, reporting live here in Startful, Jory Talley, WCBI News. All right, Jory, thanks a lot. This is a story that WCBI has been following since the very beginning. More recently, our reporters have tracked the investigation as the technology began to catch up with the evidence. Four years ago, our summer rascal took a look at the case, actually doing a walkthrough of the house there in Starkville. Sergeant Lott said Mrs. Krigler had been sitting in her wheelchair. Betty Jones was getting her ready for bed. Mrs. Jones answered the door, uh, answered a knock at the door, rather. At first, reports say Mrs. Krigler thought her friend knew the person at the door. And then she hears Betty screaming and hollers out to her. And then, um, next thing Miss Krigler knows, here comes the guy into the room. And here he is. So this is, would have been at the time the bedroom that was set up mm -hmm. and where we think the assault happened. But Mrs. Krigler was able to make it in the kitchen uh, by dragging herself there. She pulled the phone off the wall and she called for help. She was also able to give police a statement. DNA and evidence was collected that night and in the following days. Well, the families of the victims have always kept the faith, hoping for an arrest. Ann McWhorter is Betty Jones' sister. This conversation is also from four years ago. And while she can't forget the loss, she remembers her sister as a baseball fan, an active community member, and having a life well lived. Before she died, uh, we were standing on the steps of the Presbyterian Church. And I sang in the choir, and she sat out in the congregation. And we met out front. and. Um, we looked at each other, gave each other a hug, says, I love you, Betty. She says, I love you, Ann. And those are the last words that I heard from Betty. Well, of course, a lot has changed in 28 years, but as our Riley Livingston found out today, the commitment to close this case has never wavered. Riley is joining us now live from Starkville with that part of the story. Andrea, the names and faces are different from those who took on this case nearly three decades ago. And while the baton has been passed on, the drive to solve this case has held strong. No crime remains unsolved. For family and friends, this could be the closure they have wanted for so long. Police Chief Frank Nichols says the years of hard work have paid off. We've gone through a lot of peaks and valleys in this case. District Attorney Scott Colum's office will head the prosecution team. Yeah, I think it's a strong signal to the public and to people that commit crimes that we'll never give up in the pursuit of justice and you can never rest assured that you're going to get away with it. Mayor Lynn Sproul says the continued efforts from the police department is what led to an arrest. Well, I think it's remarkable. Uh, it just proves the dedication of our police department and our officers who work the case from the beginning to, to now, and it's an extremely long resolution. This is testament to that. And whether it's an old, an old case, a cold case, or it's a current case, they work it to the very best of their ability using all the resources that we can. Technology continues to expand and grow, helping police investigations. We have things now that we could never have had back in 1990. And so now that we're, we have these things available to us, we're using them. So we're doing all of the things that we should be doing as we progress to keep start with a safe community. Bringing a close to a case that has haunted residents for years. I would say uh, that this is the biggest cold case that we've had to work here in Starkville. Uh, you know, there are other cases out there, cold cases, but you know, this one, kind of jerked at the heartstring of the people here in this community because of who these young ladies were. So it was definitely, you know, um, big case, great day, historic day. This is still an ongoing investigation, 
Police say if you have any information, please contact the Starkville Police Department. Reporting live in Starkville, Riley Livingston, WCBI News. All right, Riley, thanks so much for your report.